in today's episode. We explain exactly how we pack the horses and which saddlebags and tack we use. And we have what we have. We get a private show of traditional Irish music and dancing. And we continue our long ride from the south to the north of Ireland. invited ourselves for dinner cooking in a very nice man's house so it's cottage pie tonight In today's video, I'm not going to show you what we're packing, that will be a separate video, but I'm going to talk about our packs. Um, we have Twin Oaks packs. I've not sponsored these bags, so I'm not going to say anything, you know, if they want to sponsor me, that's fine, but <laughs> I paid for these bags. So the Twin Oaks bags on Lily, because she's got such a short back, we got the ones which go under the saddle here. And there's a strange little clip, which we don't know what it's for. Um, I think they're made more for Western saddles, so we don't use that. Instead, we fashion something. But you can see the ring actually broke, like, on the third day. So we strap everything here. And then we have the little bags for the front. And I just clip it to her. We have a little sheepskin underneath, a little sheepskin half pad under Lily. So it's the bag is resting on the sheepskin. Um, to be honest, I don't know how these bags would work if we didn't have the sheepskin, so Q also has a sheepskin, we'll show you. Just because it would be resting on the horse's back and I feel like it would be quite uncomfortable or it would rub. So we've been lucky, we've been managing to avoid rubs and bumps so far. Um, but yeah, so we have the front bags and the back bags and I'll show you what Q's bags look like. So this, are, this is our ponchos, um, so you would have seen us when it's raining, we wear these. Um, when we're not wearing them, Lily has them on the front, so I'll just show you. We've just bungeed them to those little bags that I that I've already mentioned in the front. Um, so yeah, they're just they're just our ponchos. Um, Lily has it pretty easy. She's not carrying very heavy stuff. Um, actually, neither of them. We don't have a whole lot of gear, to be honest. Um, so yeah, that's our ponchos. And we've just bungeed it. I just wanted to mention the saddle which I have. Um, we did not, I don't know, plan for this trip. We did not buy horses or buy tack other than our packs just for this trip. So this saddle was the saddle that I was using in England in everyday riding. Um, it's just a little all-purpose, uh, handmade in England kind of used saddle. Um, so it doesn't have any rings on it. I'll just show you. It doesn't have any rings. It doesn't have anything for us to attach saddlebags to. It was not designed for this kind of adventure at all. Uh, it's getting a bit wet, so that's one thing I regret not bringing. We have saddle covers, but they're not waterproof ones, so I, I wish we had waterproof ones. Um, but yeah, so this is the saddle I use. It's a little bit all-purpose. It's a little bit dressage -y. It is quite comfortable. We don't have seat savers, but you know, after five, six hours in the saddle, definitely my bum is a little bit tired, a little bit sore. Um, so yeah, that's that's my saddle situation. This is Q's saddle, and this is her sheep pad. Um, so again, Q's saddle, just a. It's got some padding, um, but it's just a saddle. Q's saddle was fit fitted for her, um, and the sheep pad, we actually fold it like this, and her bags actually rest in the back. So that's Q's saddle. Obviously the bailing twine, um, that is for the blankets. We'll show you that in a minute.
So um, I was lucky with my saddle, although uh, it's an English saddle. It has a very nice and useful ring down here, which is meant to be for a kind of very um, far back position for a billet. But because we're not using it, we can actually use it to tie the back to it, which is very handy. The big twin oak bags um, came without any uh, straps for fixing, so we had to buy a set of those little fellas. We have four of those um, to strap to another ring or whatever. So two on this side, two on the other side. Um, additionally, uh, because we put our hand on top, we have an, a separate strap around as well. Um, I had them left over from my motorcycle days. Um, they're actually quite handy. They have a, a clip as well on top somewhere. So you can kind of easily undo them. And the nice thing about those is they have um, an elastic part here, so you can actually do them up quite good and they, they stay in tension so it doesn't um, rattle loose over a while. And actually the way we, we put them around the bags, um, we go through one of the rings of the Twin Oak bag, which um, is kind of just attached here with a, with a sewed on latch. So I go through the ring as well with that one to support it a bit more because basically um, most of the weight is carried here and to prevent this from ripping out at some point we support it with our strap. That's it. I wanted to mention as far as Lily, so she's a short-backed part Arabian mare. Um, so the girth that we're using, it's a pro-light girth. Um, so it actually is curved, it goes sort of towards the front of her belly curved um, and it curves around so she has a lot of shoulder room. Um, she has very big movements, very big steps. She power walks. So this girth hasn't rubbed, um, it's a bit squishy and it was quite expensive but it was I think worth the money. Uh, again, we didn't buy this just for this trip, this was just the girth that I found for her so her shoulders could move freer. Um, without the saddle slipping around because she's barrel shaped and awful to try and fit saddles for. So that's Lily's girth situation and it hasn't rubbed at all in this trip, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, Q's girth, so originally we had a girth which um, wasn't really very good, it was just a normal leather girth. And on this trip it was definitely causing Q some discomfort. It didn't really rub but it started to leave some small little lumps early on in the, in the ride. So luckily around Bantry, uh, a nice woman, she actually has a pet shop there, so we'll include a link in the show notes for that. Um, but she gave us a, a memory foam girth, we actually swapped, and um, it's very squishy, it's nice and padded. Q seems to really like it, she's never been very keen about girth, she's an ex-racehorse and I think she has some probably bad experiences. Um, but this one she does seem to be a little bit less grumpy and um, it's not rubbing at all so we're quite happy with it. Uh, this, this girth we got here in Ireland and it's about 40 euros so it wasn't horribly expensive. Um, it's called the Elico memory foam girth, yeah. So this is the blanket situation on Q and this is what the baling twine is used for. So one day we had these um, security straps um, of these front saddle bags uh, attached to the girth as, as they should be, but unfortunately they caught, I think, under the, knee pad, under the knee pads and we didn't spot that straight away. So actually at the end of the day, um, Q had a little rub because the, the bag was kind of pulled under or into the saddle and kind of pushed quite hard on the shoulder. So since then we just to avoid it, um, put these bags over the blankets. So there's a lot of cushioning, so nothing can go wrong. But um, yeah, I would, I, I really like these, these little saddlebags, but you have to be careful that the straps don't get caught and you kind of pull them onto, onto the horse and put some pressure and produce a rub. So um, actually it was our, um, kind of the back of our um, camera, which, which was push it, pushing on Q's shoulder. But um, luckily at the end of the day, uh, we, we saw it straight away, so we could do something about it. Um, we could put some cream 
Um, also, very um, luckily, we it, it rubbed off the hair as you can see, but it actually didn't rub open. So um, we caught it early enough so that there was no harm done. So now Hugh has a little bold patch um, on the shoulder, but um, yeah, it, it wasn't open ever. We're very happy and um, we hope that the hair comes back quickly and she's pretty again. So this is the last edition of Lily's packs. This is actually our sleeping bags. It's super lightweight. There's virtually nothing in there. It just looks big and bulky because we have the sleeping bags in there. Um, so we put the bungees on either side. Christian's putting the other one over on this side now. And again, these bags don't actually really have a good place. So this is where we're putting the bungees. There was a little ring. The metal ring broke on the first couple of days. I don't remember exactly. Um, but the hole is still there and we're still buckling it to the rings as if it's attached. Um, so yeah, we're just putting the, the bungees onto this little ring here on either side, but we noticed that the bag kept moving side to side. Um, I, like I said, Lily's got this big power walk, so it wasn't staying in place and it took us forever uh, to figure out how to get it to actually stay without moving. So the solution, of course, was baling twine. <laughs> that fixes everything, it seems. Um, so the baling twine, we put it through the loop and we end up actually tying it um, onto the billets. Uh, and that, that seems to be working. It keeps it in place and then that way we can tighten it a little bit and it doesn't move around. Um, it's just a waterproof bag. So it's not a special bag. Again, it was Christian's motorcycle waterproof bag. Um, and it sits a little bit on Lily's bum because she's so short-backed. But as I said, she you know, there's basically nothing in there. She's not bothered at all by it. So, yeah. So that is the gist of our packing situation. Uh, it's nothing fancy, nothing special. As you see, I mean, we're using bungee cords and bailing twine and kind of cheapy saddlebags. And um, we didn't want this adventure to be some expensive, super high-tech, fancy thing. We don't have fancy equipment. We have what we have. These were the saddles we had for the horses, these are the girths we had, uh, these are the bags we could afford, <laughs> you know. So we didn't want to make a big to-do out of this. We just wanted to have an adventure with our horses, and, and that was it. And we've kind of learned along the way how to put the stuff, which straps were working. I think that's part of the experience when you're doing long-distance travel with your horses. Um, so, you know, we've done a good job of avoiding rubs or bumps. Um, you had that one from Q, as you saw. Um, but otherwise, the horses are pretty happy. The bags aren't too heavy. Um, everything seems to be okay. We definitely had some days where the bags were slipping around and we're struggling. So you'll notice the difference between the first videos and these ones. Um, we did ditch the really big tent and got this smaller one, as you can see, the little green one there. So that was a big change that we made that made a big difference um but yeah other than that super simple super easy i don't feel like we're we're probably not doing half of it correctly but at least at least it's working and yeah that's that's all you can do so i, I think it's one of those things that anyone can can try and and go and have an adventure have an adventure with your horses because if we can do it definitely you can too so I'm going to make a separate video about what it is exactly that we've packed on this adventure. Uh, you know, we have a Harviz, our helmets. Um, we both have a backpack. Basically nothing's in there. It's like our laptops and a few small bits and things. Um, so yeah, a separate video is coming about what it is that we've packed on this adventure. And the last and final piece of gear, of course, are bridles. Um, we're going to bridle up now and get going because we have 30 kilometers to cover today. Uh, Lily has a bitless bridle. Q just has a normal, simple snaffle bit, super gentle and easy. We're riding them mostly on the buckle. They've both played polo, so they know how to neck rein and ride on the buckle, and yeah. So, that, that's about it. Bye! So, we keep the halters on the horses, um, just so, just so we can lead them, um, so yeah, the halters stay on the horses and the bridles go over the rope halters, and then we have the very long lead ropes, which are easy to grab from our front bags. Um, 
just so when we get off and we feel like leading them, we can do that. So here we are again, one of our good morning in Ireland uh, daily update videos. We again somehow managed to get on the horses. We packed everything up and by the time of 10, 20, we were actually on the road. <laughs> so, Getting closer to our goal of 9 a.m. Yeah, our, it's, it's so close, 9 a.m. being on the road. We're nearly there. Well, we have another three weeks roughly to <laughs> get that done at least once. So we'll see. But as you can see, um, we have gorgeous weather again. Um, there was some sunshine even. Um, <laughs> The road is slightly damp, but from underneath and not from above, which makes us very happy. So we enjoy the sunshine, it's quite chilly this morning, but um, who cares? We are happy um, and we're going north. Yesterday we had a rest day, the horses had a rest day. Um, they were allowed to be in a nice paddock with nice grass, so they had a chill day stuffed their bellies and are now fit for the road again while uh, we were yeah well we should have had a rest day <laughs> yeah, but we had work to do video editing and oh yeah adventure essays, we were, website stuff and yep we were busy serving you guys keeping the equestrian adventurers platform up and running so that you can have some cool articles some cool resources and a podcast and a podcast, yeah, we recorded a podcast, podcast yesterday. yesterday. So yeah, it's actually, from what I heard, it's got to be a good one. So yeah, looking forward to that, to, to publish that for you. Um, so yeah, we had some sort of a rest day. To, Continue to, on to Woodville. <laughs> that was the sad man. Oh. Uh, anyways, um, the cool thing about yesterday was um, we actually um, were invited to dinner or invited ourselves to dinner. However. We ended up um, cooking. Cooked dinner. Yeah, for I cooked. Our host. <laughs> I cooked dinner for our host. Um, we had some guests. We had um, Dee, which we met uh, the day before, which um, offered us a place to stay for a night. So we had a nice uh, evening with good food. I was um, very happy to have some domestic life for an, for an evening with uh, washing dishes and peeling potatoes and <laughs> cooking and stuff like normal people do so yeah I had great fun it was a great evening um, we had a great chat with everyone yeah, so yeah we we're people in the end yeah oh yeah we was... So it was a nice big family meal oh yeah at the dinner table yeah very nice so our souls are rested um, our bodies a bit less rested and um, the horses are rested so we're absolutely good to go for today and see what it brings over and out very long day today. We're riding 34 kilometers, seven hours in the saddle, and we didn't get going until about 10.30. <sighs> it's very tiring. And riding on roads is quite boring. I miss cantering. I miss trails.
for everyone who's wondering how much it is raining in Ireland at the moment while we have our amazing trip. This is supposed to be a field, as you can see by trees standing in there. Back there, the line of trees, trees actually, the trees are connected by a wall, which you might or might not see. Um, yeah, it's beautiful landscape, very happy, but yeah, it's equally wet as it is beautiful. This is not a lake, it seems like. It is a field with a gate, but it's flooded. So as you already figured out, we're not really into that hardcore camping thing and cooking and stove and stuff. Our stove actually was pretty crap anyway, so we threw it away. We don't have a stove. What we have is... Lasagna! <laughs> yeah! So Crystal is very chocolate good. Chocolate milk, hot chocolate, uh, fuel stations, those are the way to go. There you go, you see and it in the background. Candy. We always find some <laughs> tiny little village fuel station. They have a super good deli counter usually. We have nice fresh made burgers, chips, lasagna, hot chocolate is awesome. We live the life of kings here. Yeah. And queens of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Christian and I get treated to a traditional Irish music and Irish dancing show. We can't believe how lucky we are to have been welcomed into this amazing family's home and to be able to witness part of the Irish culture. And we fall asleep that night feeling like coming to this country has been well worth the hardships. And we realize that no matter how much further we keep riding or how much longer we keep going, that by coming here and enjoying this trip with our horses, we've actually accomplished something bigger and larger than just riding from A to B. <laughs> and because of the vulnerability of riding our horses and not having a place to stay each night, we've actually been able to open ourselves and meet so many people because of this that we never would have met and we never would have been able to experience wonderful moments such as this. And it's moments like this that really will forever stay in our hearts. about our Ireland adventures and more in the Equestrian Adventuresses book series available on Amazon Worldwide. These are true stories of horseback adventures around the globe written by fellow adventuresses like you. Next time. Christian and I get invited to a car rally. And we try and make it to the north before winter.